Today, we are going to talk about the character who should have been the true hero of the Ant-Man movie. Ant-Woman? Not quite. Today, we're actually talking about Wasp, because your geek history lesson is now in session. Flutter, flutter. And welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I'm Jason Insect Wings Inman. Welcome to your Mind University because we are Geek History Lesson, the podcast where you come to learn about pop culture things, objects, colors, and party hats. Colors. Yes, and party hats. Don't forget it. That's the most important part. And today's lesson is about one of the most important women, I think, in the Marvel Universe, a founding Avenger, Ashley Who is this person? Janet Van Dyne, (gasps) a.k.a. the Wasp, a.k.a. the Winsome Wasp. The the what? The Winsome Wasp. Is that, that, did you make that up? No, that was what she was called for like her first 50 issues. I have never heard that before. Because it was really important that she was pretty. Okay. Well, let's just hop right into this uh, lesson. We've been deep into the Marvel Universe for several weeks now. Let's not get out of the muck. Let's go deeper into (laughs) it. So let's hear the Tencent origin of the Wasp. Janet Van Dyne. We are talking about Janet Van Dyne. We right? are. Yes. Uh, but first, we're going to have a little Cliff Note sidebar thing. What? So some people who are more familiar with the Ant-Man movie uh, recently in theaters might wonder why we are not talking about hope. And the reason that we're hey, not... Hey, Ashley, why aren't we talking about hope? Well, I'm so glad that you asked, Jason. The reason that we're not talking about her is because Hope Pym only shows up in 16 issues, and she belongs on Earth 982, which doesn't have a lot of adventures on it. Janet is where the character in the movie takes a lot of inspiration from. And just for the nerds out there, Marvel, the Marvel Comics universe has a multiverse just like DC, yes. and their Earth is 616. 616. Generally, we don't like to talk about that stuff because it just gets confusing. Yes. But... So she's from a completely different Earth. She's from a oh. completely different Earth. She, she's not from an important Earth, and she doesn't do very much. They so that just, is why we were talking about So, Janet. yeah, so they just took the name. They really did. Okay. So. Janet Van Dyne. Janet Van Dyne, a.k.a. Wasp, is a human mutant, which I didn't know. Just like the X-Men, she is a mutant. Really? Yes. Even in the mainstream Marvel, because in the Ultimate, she is a mutant. Yes. Even in the mainstream Marvel, yes. she's a mutant. Yes. Wow, that's cool. She was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby and first appeared in Tales to Astonish number 44. Her famous partnerships include Hank Pym and only Hank Pym. Her team affiliations include uh, the regular Avengers, mm-hmm. the Avengers Unity Squad, mm-hmm. Lady Liberators, Mighty Avengers, and the West Coast Avengers. West Coast Avengers. Down, down, down. Our favorite of all Avengers team I here was, in the wh- Mind University. I was waiting for that. <laughs> I've seen a lot of tweets about my theme song lately. I know, because you brought it up in uh, a recent past episode. <laughs> a recent past episode, yes. <laughs> I don't exactly know how many episodes ago that was, because it gets mentioned a lot. Yep. Her abilities include size manipulation, flight, bioelectric blasts, and insect telepathy. She was played by an actress named Haley Lovett in Ant-Man, whose face we never got to see. And, she and we'll probably never see again. Probably. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's worth mentioning. Sure. Um, and she is ranked as the fifth greatest Avenger of all time. According to Marvel.com, she is the highest ranked female Avenger on that list. Well, I think we think is a little bit misogynistic. uh, Yeah, but we can kind of guess who the other ones are. The movie ones. Yeah, it's probably Cap, Iron Man, Thor, and probably Ant Man. Yeah, or Hulk. Yeah, one of those two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes, that is your ten cent origin for Janet Van Dyne. Why don't we move on to the meat cute? Meat cute is the section of this podcast that is called Geek History Lesson that you are currently listening to right (laughs) now, where we tell you how we met or where we met this character. For the very first time. Yes. Yes. Ashley. Jason. <laughs> where did you first meet the Wasp, Janet Van Dyne? Um, as with so many Marvel characters who aren't part of the X-Men, the first place that I ever met Janet Van Dyne was in Civil War in 2008. Yay, by um, the Civil, the miniseries by Mark Miller. Yes. And the reason that I say 2008 is because that is the year that I read it. It was not necessarily the year it was published. It came out in uh, 2006. Six or seven, I believe. Yes. Yes. It, it had been out for some time. Not, not, the, too, not too long. Point. Not too long. No, but I read it in a trade. Okay, whatever. I didn't read it long. Yeah, it so works. that was where I first met her, and then I read The Ultimates not too long after that, and I've always liked Wasp. I think nice. she's cool. Nice. Where did you first meet Janet Van Dyne, or uh, Janet Pym? I first encountered Janet Van Dyne. I don't ever call her Janet Pym. Uh, Janet Van Dyne be- in the Avengers run that was right after Heroes Reborn with 
George Perez and Kurt Busiek, mm-hmm. who is my favorite mm-hmm. Avengers run. I've talked about it on a Geek History lesson before. It's she got a new costume for that run. Um, she gets the new costumes all the time. Yep. I remember her showing up in the Avengers Mansion, and Cap was like, "You should come back to the team, Janet." And she was just like, "No, Hank and I are going to go on a honeymoon, but I'll design your team all new costumes." Yep. <laughs> and she kept coming back here and there, and um, but the story where I came to love her. Is a tie. Okay. It's a tie between Avengers Forever, which is this 12 part miniseries by uh, Kurt Music, and she's an integral part of that miniseries. Mm-hmm. And she's really great. And she's almost like the true team leader of the Avengers in that book. Because yeah. just to explain this a little bit, and I, I try not to get way off topic. That's fine. Before. Totally fine. Go for it. Avengers Forever is a time travel storyline where Kang the Conqueror gathers a team of Avengers from all different timelines. Uh-huh. So there's That's a... why I wasn't going to talk about it because yep. it's kind of complicated. It, it's very complicated. <laughs> but basically he he gathers Avengers from all along uh, uh, the timeline. So he gathers a Hawkeye who's not really wearing his purple costume. Mm-hmm. He gathers a, a Captain America right before Captain America quit in the 70s yep. because of corruption and stuff like that. And then he also gathered like Songbird, which was surprising at that time because Songbird was a Thunderbolt villain and when she showed up everybody was like but she's a villain but see you knew that she was somewhere from the future Mm -hmm. and because of Captain America's unwillingness and kind of he was like I don't know I don't really blah 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 blah. I can't really I don't know if I want to do this anymore because the US government's corrupt and Vietnam and then so Wasp had to take charge of the team Mm -hmm. in that series and it's actually one of her strongest moments my second favorite moment for her is the Ultimates I I think in the Ultimates she's great yeah I think the the Ultimates and we're going to talk uh, briefly mm-hmm. about that at the at the end of the history lesson. I think in the Ultimates, she becomes a really uh, well-rounded character, mm-hmm. I guess. So, Kirby's Music Avengers run, uh, Heroes Return run is where I met her. Uh, Avengers Forever is where I loved her. Cool. That sounded creepy. No, she's a grown woman. Hey, baby, it's okay. Flap your wings for me anytime. And now we move on <laughs> to the History 101 section, the main meat of the podcast, where Ashley is going to take the lesson of Janet Van Dyne because it's well done. It's been in the oven for a long time. She's mm. going to put it on a platter. She's going to give it to us so we can eat it in small, small pieces and get smarter you might about Janet Van Dyne. You might want to eat it in big pieces because it turned out to be a lot longer than I anticipated. Hey, just like the monster <laughs> of the Fantastic Four. All right, here we go. We're del- we're, we're diving into some very classic Marvel knowledge lately. We I like are. It. It's fun. Ashley, give us, Professor Ashley, give us the lesson of Janet Van Dyne. Okay, the Janet Wasp. Van Dyne, the Wasp, was born in Creskill, New Jersey, a real place for those wondering. Okay. She grew up as a socialite daughter to a wealthy scientist father named Vernon Van Dyne. <laughs> uh, Stan Lee and his alliteration. All right. Yeah, apparently, uh, fun fact, uh, the characters that he gave alliterative names to were mm-hmm. supposed to be his favorite characters, like Warren Worthington, Peter Parker, Scott Son. I just think that's interesting. So he likes Janet's father. Okay. Yeah. Well, sure. Who, who doesn't like a socialite from New Jersey? Excelsior! Who knows? Uh, in, in her first appearance, Vernon is killed. <gasps> When he unleashes an alien entity during an experiment, because it's the '60s and we like space nonsense. Can I make a a? I, I don't know Janet's origin. Can I make a bold prediction? Uh, sure. Does she swear on the grave of her father to avenge him, <laughs> and then a wasp comes through the window? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I friggin' wish. Uh, so Vernon at the time had a research partner. Okay. A sciencey sciencey guy named Hank Pym. Oh, it, so Hank's older. Yes. Okay. Uh, more on that later. Okay, we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Janet turned to Hank because he was this person who she was familiar with. She's about 19. Sure. Um, she turned to him for aid in avenging her father's death. Mm-hmm. And her plan to do this is because they discover that she has the X gene, that she's going to undergo several surgeries performed, of course, by Hank in order to be able to grow wings on her back. All right. So she grows wings on her back. Because of the surgeries. Yes. This is why you don't get surgeries, But they kids. only grow when she shrinks below four feet tall. That's a little weird. Okay. Yeah. So she's not walking around in her regular life with these wings on her back when she gets really wee. She gets these little wings on her back. So no honey, I shrunk the wings. No. Got it. And she uses pin particle injections that allow her to change her size. All right. 
So at this time, uh, Janet takes on the name Wasp because she's like, well, I'm small and I kind of look like a bee, but I'm going to call myself a wasp. I kind of look like a bee. <laughs> well, so I'll call myself a wasp, <laughs> the enemy of the bees. <laughs> well, um, if you haven't seen the movie Mr. Holmes, uh, wasps are assholes yep. who will kill you. Pretty much. Uh, and bumblebees are sweet and they'll more or less leave you alone. So I kind of understand the name. Wasp sounds a lot more badass. And it I does. think DC had the bumblebee character at the time. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Probably. So, So that. So Wasp and Ant-Man, of course, team up immediately to defeat this alien entity that had killed Janet's father. That's right. And they are so successful, so effortlessly great at working together that they decide to remain working together as a superhero duo. Cool. And during this time, of course, Janet falls in love with Hank. And during during this initial run, she is called the Winsome Wasp. Winsome is like someone who's really kind of beautiful and wayfish because it's the 60s and women are only good for looking pretty. And they drop that adjective pretty fast when she becomes an Avenger. So she falls in love with Hank. That's really, really great. And he spurns her when she admits her feelings because of her young age and because she physically resembles Hank's first wife who had been murdered. I tried really, really hard. I read some of these early issues. I looked all over the internet. I can find nothing about this first wife's name, how she died, or anything else. She's other... just mentioned and then thrown yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's the reason why Hank is turning Jan down because she's quite young. Well, it's very, it's very interesting what you've told me so far because Hank Pym, I've always kind of viewed him as Reed Richards' contemporary. Right, and I was just going to mention that this yeah. is a lot like uh, Reed and Sue's early yeah. relationship. Yeah, so it's interesting that. So I assume that Hank is maybe in his late twenties. Uh, I would say he's in his 30s. Okay, okay. So Because he's a contemporary of her father. Mm-hmm. So I would say he's like into his 30s. So technically maybe older than Reed because Reed, has, Reed and Sue has that six-year yeah. gap. Wow, it's kind of... why. So so we have a, a wife that we don't know about. Who who was murdered. Who was murdered. God has a lot of murder. And we're, and we're, <laughs> and we're spurning... Man, the insect kingdom is hard. <laughs> <laughs> he is the he's a he's a praying mantis. Okay, he's gonna murder her after cool. they copulate. All right, continue. We, enough of a side track. Yes. So yeah. So they're a lot like Reed and Sue, which is a, kind of an interesting parallel. That well, Stanley was like, here here are some scientists who well, are not good at being in a relationship. Well, another thing about it you have to think about is that Stanley basically created all the main foundation of the Marvel universe within a year. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Like the Avengers, Hulk, Thor, Fantastic Four, all popped up within like a year. Mm-hmm. But I just, yeah, that was interesting. So as a duo, Hank and Janet, Ant-Man and Wasp, basically, you know, it's it's the Silver Age. So they have a bunch of one-off adventures that don't really matter. Yay! You know, like like everybody else at the time. During this time, Janet uses um, an air gun in order to shoot her wasp sting because okay. she hasn't mutated to be able to shoot the electrical bolt from, from her, her hand like we, like we know her to mm-hmm. do today. So she uses this tiny little gun. Um, it's silver. It's so, like, precious space age. This is a pseudo phaser kind of thing when cool. they draw it. It's very cute. Uh, but eventually she develops a biologic burst. More on that later. Okay. And then, <gasps> a character that we know, <gasps> that we've done a lesson on, <gasps> named Loki, oh, okay. threatens the safety of the world, and Janet is part of a group of superheroes that forms in order to take him down and save the world, known as the Avengers. Mm-hmm. If you don't know the events of the story, you can go to youtube.com slash Jawin, J-E-W-I-I-N, and watch a reenactment of it told by Jason. Called the origin of the Avengers. Yep. Um, it's a great video. And Wasp is played by a piece of paper taped to a pen. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I actually really like that joke. Because <laughs> Jason didn't know any women at the time. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. I knew women. Uh, actually, a girl helped us film that. Um, but uh, I just thought it was funnier that they would pop up over the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. It's very <laughs> funny. Uh, fun fact. Fun fact. It is Hank and Janet who propose that these group of heroes remain together as a team. I knew that. And bonus fun fact, Janet, Janet is the one who names the Avengers. The Avengers. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was cool as opposed to just like, this is the Avengers yep. yeah. initiative. It's Bruh. also weird too. like, But it makes sense now that I know her origin is that like she had a dead She's parent. A, she likes to get revenge yeah, on Yeah, yeah. She, she was like, we must avenge. And so everything with her is avenging. Yeah, I don't, there's no mention of what happens to her mother. So I don't know if her mother is dead mom. or not around or like a drunk. I have an idea. Okay. I have an idea. Pitch me on what happened to Mrs. Van Dyne. Um, you see her father... Uh, was trying to take apart a missile that was being launched to America from the commies. <laughs> right. And she had a wasp suit too, and she shrank down and went Between into the, the molecules. And she went into what I like to call the microverse, not the quantum verse. The microverse. The microverse. The micro world. Yep, which is actually what it's called the microverse, Shh, not the quantum verse. It's the microverse. And they're, yeah. 
But quantum sounds like science. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why Quantum Leap used it. Oh, boy. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so she named the Avengers, and now they're rare. She's she's a founding Avenger, yeah. and we're raring to go. So here's my favorite thing about early Janet, because I don't really, she's she's very like, oh, damselly, I'm very pretty. Just like Sue Storm. Just like many, many mm-hmm. uh, early comic female characters. But my favorite thing about her is in these early Avengers stories, and they're totally worth checking out like for this alone, mm-hmm. is that she constantly comments on the attractiveness of all the men around her, especially Thor. Yep. Like, she's so thirsty for Thor, like. Is so funny, and please never, <laughs> never say that statement ever again. She's thirsty for Thor. She is, man. There's that should that would be a great T-shirt. Should we make that thirsty for Thor? That's great. <laughs> if you want a thirsty for Thor T-shirt, you can go to our social media and let us know. Oh man, thirsty for Thor. Huh? The, the less good thing about this is that <laughs> oh, God. is that this is the beginning um, of Hank's anger and jealousy towards Janet. Oh, that asshole. Uh, more on that later. There's a lot of more more on that later. A lot of this stuff will pay off kind of okay, down okay. the line. Okay, okay, all right, a lot of foreshadowing. All these, right. uh, these very forward comments that Janet make also forces Hank to decide that he's going to commit and have a relationship with her, and so they start going out mm. once they're Avengers. They're like, well, we're grown-up people now, so you're going to be my boyfriend. Not long after the formation of the Avengers, Janet is shot <gasps> by Count Nefaria. Mm-hmm. So you know he's a bad guy. Yep. Uh, with a bullet, regular old bullet, and she suffers a collapsed lung and quits the Avengers. Is to recover. And that's the end of the lesson on Janet Van Dyne. Yep. Thanks, everybody. 15 minutes. Thanks for playing. <laughs> uh, when Janet returns to the Avengers, of course, in Avengers number 26, she no longer requires pin particles in order to change her size and discovers that she is a mutant and she's able to shoot the bioelectric blast from her hands. That's convenient. So there you go. She comes back. Uh, all she got an upgrade in her brief absence from the Avengers. Yeah, man. If only, I, if only everybody got so upgraded by getting shot. Right through the lung. Yeah, through the lung. So she duels around as a member of the Avengers, you know, for basically most of the Silver Age, and she spends a lot of time trying to get Hank to propose to her. Like there are many, many plots, kind of like Gwen Stacy. Like you can go back and listen to our Gwen Stacy episode, and there's a lot of times where she's just like, "Peter, you must propose to me," and he's like, "I don't know, I'm like 17." Well, you know where that comes from, though, right? No, tell me. It comes from 1950s Lois Lane and Superman. Oh, really? Yes, because a lot of Lois Lane stories in the 50s was oh, her yeah. trying to expose his secret identity or trying to convince Superman to marry her. Which I think comes from like 1940s romance mm-hmm, comics. Mm-hmm, yep. So that's who I'm gonna blame. So Hank Pym. Well, so yellow. There's this character named Yellow Jacket. Okay. Who we all know is Hank Pym. But right now oh, we, we oh, just wait, 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 wait. I thought he was Darren Cross. Uh, Corey stole from House of Cards. I no, he's Hank oh, Pym. Okay. But at the time, he's just Yellow Jacket. Got it. A bad guy named Yellow Jacket. And nobody like knows a, who he is. Like a wasp. Nobody knows who he is. Okay. Very mysterious. Breaks into Avengers Mansion. Holy cow! Claiming that he has killed Hank Pym. No. And he kidnaps Janet Van Dyne. Okay. However. Janet does not believe that Yellow Jacket killed Hank because she would know if her love had died. Of course. And during her investigation, while she's being held by him, she discovers his true identity, Hank Pym. So she marries him. Yeah. See, this is the part of that I've always been bothered by Janet Van Dyne. She doesn't marry nice Hank Pym Ant-Man. She marries crazy the violent, crazy bipolar. Not that there's anything wrong with bipolar people. I'm sorry, I apologize. I know there's lots of bipolar people. My father's bipolar. Shh. Um, um, unstable, shall we say? Unstable. The most unstable mm-hmm. version of this man that she could have ever. That's the one that she agrees to marry. Yes. That's where like the, the because because it's that whole again like romance like I can fix you kind of thing, oh. which is kind of Janet's thing for a little bit. Okay. So, so she married the most she important thing is she marries crazy Hank Pym. She marries Yellow crazy Hank Pym. Crazy and Hank Pym. And she spends most of her 70s kind of like Hawkeye. You can go listen to our Hawkeye episode. Quitting and rejoining the Avengers. Because that's what you do in the 70s. I, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Oh. So Janet tells the Avengers one day. She calls up Avengers Mansion. And she says that she thinks that Hank has suffered a hello, mental breakdown. Hello, hello, Miss Janet. This is Jarvis. Hi. Um, hello. Hi, hi, Jarvis. <laughs> nice to talk to you again. Yes. Um, did you get that raspberry jam I sent you? Uh, yeah, I put it on crumpets. It was super great. Very but good. Uh, more importantly, I am 99% sure that Hank has suffered a mental breakdown. Really? Yes. 
Well, I believe if he had suffered a mental breakdown that my master, Mr. Anthony, that is Iron Man, as you know him, would have been able to figure this out. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm being kidnapped. Would click. Hello? Hello? Shall I send you more raspberry jam? Oh, my. This is a cricket sound effect. My linens need to be changed. Excuse me. <laughs> Always the linens. Um, so in retaliation for her saying this to the Avengers, Hank kidnaps her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and Even though he's already married to no, her. No, but get this. He kidnaps her, <laughs> and then Ultron kidnaps her, and brainwashes her, and uses her brain patterns as a template to create Jocasta. Oh, Jocasta, the robot bride of Ultron. Yes. Um, now, here's the interesting thing. So she was not... Once kidnapped, she was double, double kidnapped, kidnapped while she was already. Oh, God. All right. Yes. And if you, dear listeners, want to avoid any of your wonderful professors getting double kidnapped, one of the ways that you can help upgrade the security at the Mind University is not go to Mexico. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you nailed that segue. <laughs> well, you know, but if, when you're in Mexico, which is a fine, fine country. Um, Hello, you, Mexican listeners. You can go to patreon.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, and you can help donate to keep the lights on in the Mayan University because we have some classrooms where the paint is peeling off the walls. We have some banisters that are made of lead. Don't make fun of the art room. And we have some, uh, uh, um, We I know there's some shady dealings going behind some dumpsters. So we need your support at patreon.com slash Jawin to get rid of the ruffians and, and every little bit helps. And we think all of our patrons that keep the show going. There's a lot of great uh, perks there, so I would go suggest being a part of it over there. Patreon.com slash Jawin. Thank you, patrons. And uh, classes back. What's the, oh, what's, what's the opposite of dismiss? In session? There you go. Classes back in session. Back in the session. Uh, so we're up to the 1980s right now. Okay. Or as I like to call them, the domestic abuse era of Janet Van Dyne's life. That's a long title. Yes. <laughs> That's what we'll fixate on the length of that title. Janet discovers that Hank, who's still her husband. Oh, good Lord. Plans to stage. Is they're he, they're both he, regular Avengers right he, now. Is he still Yellow Jacket? He's Ant-Man. Oh, he's Ant-Man now. Okay, yes. so he switched he's out of that. He's crazy Ant-Man. He's crazy Ant-Man. Um, he discovers that Hank has plans to stage an attack to make himself look like a hero in order to save a bunch of people so that he'll look good in front of the Avengers because they're like not so hot on him right now. Oh, good Lord, Hank. What's wrong with you? So when she tries to convince Hank and she can, you know, not to do this and she confronts him with this information, he smacks her across the face. Yes. And this what? happens in an issue called uh, Avengers number 213 by Jim Shooter and Bob Hall. And if you go and look up some information about this issue, Jim Shooter, the writer, is pretty adamant that he just wanted uh, Hank to kind of, you know, push Janet out of his way, kind of shrug her off. And the artist drew it as hidden. And that, yeah, and that Bob Hall, because of the school of like art that he came from, was always taught choose a big dramatic gesture, and that's the reason why it was so violent, Whoa. and why he's like striking her across the face, and that by the time he saw it, there was no time to change it. So I don't know whether that's true or not, but Jim Shooter throws Bob Hall under the bus. And this and this moment is literally what most people remember Hank Pym as. Yes. And funny fun fact, actually, until the movie that just came out a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, um, I think Hank Pym, the movie might be able to erase some of this. Like people, uh, maybe the, the consciousness, you know, something like that. The and Ultimates I, doesn't help either. No, but I also think that that's the main reason. This story is the main reason why Hank Pym is not the star of the Ant Man. Why movie. he's a secondary character? Yeah. But so that's a thing that happened. So Janet uh, returns to Avengers Mansion, and she joins the team again. And Hank is kicked off the team, and she is elected as a chairperson. Mm-hmm. And this basically makes her. You know, the head of the Avengers, because yeah, they decide leader. that there needs to be more checks and balances, more leadership within the Avengers so that something like that couldn't happen again. And it's part of Jan's, I don't know, uh, manifesto to increase the number of female Avengers. She recruits the She-Hulk and, go, Jan. and Captain Marvel, who was Monica Rambeau at the time. And she's praised by Captain America for her natural leadership and team leading. She is a good leader of the Avengers. She's one of the best. Actually. She leads a lot of different Avengers teams, actually. Oh, really? Like what Like what other ones? Well, we'll get to that. Oh, <laughs> it's it's okay. coming down the chute. All right. Outside of her life as an Avenger, Janet also becomes a successful fashion designer, a detail that has followed her through to the modern era. Yeah. And so not only does she do kind of the casual thing, but that's why, and we made the joke at the top of the show that her costume changes so much. And her like, costume changes all the time. I know. And she has, I always think that like 1980s onward, Janet has one of the coolest costumes. Which one? The black and yellow one? Yeah, the black and gold, I think is like just a really beautiful, subtle. Do you like it with the skirt or without the skirt? Uh, I could go either way. I, okay. I don't think the skirt is practical, but mm-hmm. I think it's very pretty. Yeah. 
Um, and it's one of the reasons why she gets to design everybody else's new costumes True. for yep. the action figures. Mm-hmm. She briefly dates Tony Stark, like, for an issue. Yep. Um, until she discovers that he's Iron Man, because at the time, their identities are separate. At the time, Iron Man, uh, that's why there was the joke in Iron Man 1, Iron Man at the time, his secret identity was that Iron Man was his bodyguard. Yes. And nobody knew that Tony Stark, Tony Stark, knowing that Tony Stark was Iron Man was a thing that didn't happen until the early 2000s. Yeah. It was kind of the Bruce Wayne Batman thing. They were so different that there's like no way that you could have considered that one, you know, that yeah, they no, were the same person. Nobody would have thought that Tony Stark would be masquerading as his employee. Yes. So then, Secret Wars happens. Secret Wars. Marvel's original Secret Wars. You can go back and listen to our episode on that. Uh, Janet is not so great in Secret Wars. She kisses Magneto in order to learn his plans, and that's that's basically it. Yep. And Secret Wars, of course, is where they st- the Beyonder, this entity, steals all the Marvel heroes, takes them to the Beyonder's planet, and is like, fight! Like Mortal Kombat, and then eventually they go back to Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, again, as Ashley stated, we did a big review of it. Yes, we did. More on that in that episode. Yay. So toward the end of the 80s, Janet joins the West Coast Avengers. West Coast Avengers. Bow, bow, bow. And Does she not- have a Thunderbird? Sure. Okay. And is not only their <laughs> founding member, but she's also the original she, le- leader of the team. She is their founding member? She's responsible for the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that, kids? Go blame Janet. <laughs> During this time, Janet renews her romantic relationship with Hank Pym. Oh. Um, and ultimately becomes a reserve member of the West Coast Avengers, stepping down from the position of leadership. West goes to Reserve Avenger. Brown, 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 brown. You got some real like sleazy trombone going on there. <laughs> During the 90s, Janet returns to the Avengers proper. Okay. First as a reserve member and then as a full fledged member. She eventually becomes the leader of the Avengers again. Yep. And accidentally sets off the Avengers disassembled storyline. Which we have talked oh, about. Oh, we took a, quite a to leap. De- yes. we, we leaped over the, the entirety of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I didn't want to explain Avengers forever because it was a lot of time travel stuff and uh-huh. it would have involved explaining a lot of secondary stuff that I, I don't think is important to Well, her. real quick, of course, in the 90s uh, was the big onslaught. Uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, scandal shouldn't to Maggie where all the, the heroes got taken to an alternate universe. Um, Janet was in it. But again, she's not a big part of it. Not a big part of it. When they come back, uh, her and Hank are reserve members mm-hmm. in the Kurt Music and uh, George Perez run. She shows up in Ultron Unlimited, which we mm-hmm. also did a review of, which is in the past. Um, go listen to the episode. It's actually a really quite a good episode. Quite a great storyline, too. And she has a great moment in it. And then she's an integral part of Avengers Forever. But Avengers Forever, if you don't know a lot about Avengers continuity, is a tough read. Yeah. It's tough for me. And I know a lot about the Avengers. <laughs> So it's because Kurt Music, the guy who wrote it, is just an he's Avengers a, a fanboy. knowledge bomb. Yeah. Like he knows everything. He's a smart dude. So okay, we're we're in Avengers Dissemble. We're in the early two thousands. Holy uh, crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why we skipped over all the night. How did she set it off? So what happens is she gets a little tipsy, she has some drinks. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoiler alerts, superheroes drink. That doesn't make sense. Um, Some of them are alcoholics. Janet is not. All right, all right, all right. And she talks about a past pregnancy scare that she has and goes on to insult the Scarlet Witch's ability as a mother. Oh, Bendis. Referring to the twins. And then Scarlet Witch goes crazy. And basically destroys the Avengers. And explodes Avengers. And kills Scott Lang. Yes, which you can go back and listen to in our Scott Lang episode. (laughs) Man, we have a lot of callbacks in this one. I know. Well, that's what happens. We've done a lot of Avengers. This is what happens when our podcast has the continuity of the Marvel Universe. F, yeah. That's also what happens when you're in your, like, 70s episode. When you're in your 70s. As in episode number is not H. Uh, sure. <laughs> also, during her tenure as leader of the Avengers this time around, Janet has a fling with Hawkeye. Yep. Um, and gets even more, gets the number of female team members to outnumber the men. Now, for like a second. Now, is this before? I think the the romance with Hawkeye is earlier than it's this. It's slightly before because Hawkeye's killed in Avengers Assemble. Yes. And he's gone. But for again, like it doesn't. Two years. It doesn't last very long because she's like, "Well, it's a fling, and okay, I'm okay. with mm-hmm. Hank." But I just thought it was it was worth yeah, mentioning know, okay, that okay. they mm-hmm. kissed once. Yep, they do. Hank proposes to Janet following Avengers Disassembled, and she turns him down, vowing to never marry him again. Okay. That happens. All right. Sure. Um, however, she and Hank quickly reconcile. And retire from superheroing and move to Oxford in Great Britain. Yay! I don't know why it's Oxford. I guess because it's like, you know, Oxford University and Hank's a smart guy. 
but it's really important that they moved to Oxford. He got a teaching gig over there. It's all good. I don't, I don't maybe. During uh, the Civil War storyline that we talked about at the top of the show, uh-huh. where basically uh, something happens and the government's like, we need people to register. And Tony's like, yeah. And Captain America's like, no. And then it splits everybody and they fight. Yep. And there's a movie coming out in April. Yay. Um, I totally lost my spot. There it is. Sorry. Uh, Janet is once more, she's a regular Avenger and mm-hmm. she is pro-registration because her identity has always been public. Yeah, which is a little bit hypocritical. Uh, yes. Um, but she hosts a pro-registration reality TV show called America's Newest Superhero. Oh, good lord. So, like, whenever somebody comes out, they're on her show. It's a very minor plot line. Bop, 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 bop. But I think it's an interesting um, kind of carry-on because Janet's one of the only characters who has kind of a functioning um, outside career that's not like, I'm a scientist. Yep. You know, and, and so this is like more, she's more in touch with popular culture and what's going on. And I think it's interesting that she becomes this talk show host. That's or interesting. Reality I show don't host. remember that at all. That's interesting. It's literally like two panels. Like oh. you see like footage of her. Oh, that's it? it. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. It's cool, very cool. minor. Oh, I figured it would have been like a mini series or something. Like no, 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 no. Can it be a mini series? Let's make this yes. happen, Marvel. Uh, Marvel, you can call us. I know you're listening. Bop, 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 bop. Jason, can you tell us a little bit about the initiative? Well, Ashley, after the Civil War, Captain America got his ass handed to him, basically because he gave up. He died. Uh, no, he gave up. Uh, he died after that, actually. Um, the Civil War was over by that point. Sorry to out nerd you. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the initiative was this idea that was started that instead of having all the superhero teams based in New York, which is kind of ridiculous, uh, the idea was that the Avengers would spread out between all the 50 states. Each state would have its own superhero team. Mm-hmm. And the initiative was the initiative to do that, the 50 state initiative, and also to make sure that all new superheroes were trained. Yes. Properly trained. Yep. Uh, Janet is a member of a team called the Mighty Avengers. That's also the title of the book. Uh-huh. Uh, led by Carol Danvers and Tony Stark. Yep. And she determines during this run that Ultron has taken over Iron Man's body. Oh, I remember this yes. one. Oh. <laughs> and discovers that Hank Pym is a scroll imposter. Yep, because uh, this was the big this was the big lead up to, to the story se- of Secret, Secret Invasion. Invasion. Basically, the thing about Secret Invasion is that you learn that a bunch of characters that you thought were regular Marvel characters were scrolls. Yep, and and a bunch of characters that you thought were, have been dead since the seventies have been on the scroll planet as prisoners for years. Yes, and the reason that she discovered um, Hank Pym's identity is because um, scroll Hank Pym poisons her, and Janet becomes a bio bomb. Yes. And she's going to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then she's going to explode. And in order to prevent her from killing, you know, thousands, hundreds well, of people. Yeah. Well, well, real quick, the the bio bomb that is actually a neat story point. What it is is that he he gives her in Mighty Avengers, mm-hmm. and, and this is in Mighty Avengers number one. He gives her an injection, and that injection allows her to grow to giant man size. Yes, because so, previously she can only shrink. Yeah. So you and but then you find out that after he's a scroll that that injection is the bio bomb, so that like she'll grow so big that she'll just explode the planet. In yes. Half. So what happens is Thor sent you know, using Mjolnir sends Janet through space. Um, and the age she, of the dimension, Janet. Fare thee well, fair Janet. Um, and Hank Pym, regular Hank Pym, feels so bad about this that he becomes Wasp for like a minute. Yes, he becomes the Wasp in the Dan Slott Mighty Avengers run, which, by the way, if you want to read an Avengers run that's kind of like Justice League International, which by, by I mean by that is it's a team made of like weird characters. I got a bunch of young Avengers and it's on the fun. team. Jarvis is a member of the team. Yeah. And um, it's just fun and weird. Amadeus Cho is on there. It's really great. It's probably one of my favorite Avengers Yes, runs. and you don't need to know anything, anything anything about the Avengers. All you need to know is that Janet died and Hank has taken over. And I think it's 20 issues, I think, or something like 15. Y- yeah. It's really short. It's 25, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it, it, it's a fun run. It's great. It's probably the first one that I read on Comixology. And, and, and Hank is the Wasp. Yes, Hank is the Wasp. So then we're going to skip forward, and I'm going to hit my mic Yay. to an event called Avengers vs. X-Men. Avengers AVX. Um, Avengers vs. X-Men. Basically, all you need to know about that is in the title. Yep. And the part that we're going to fixate on is during this run, it is revealed that Janet is not, in fact, dead. <laughs> because comics... And that when Thor sent her out into space, he sent her to the microverse. You mean the quantum realm? I mean the microverse. You mean the quantum with realm? With the micronauts. <laughs> and so she's, you know, she's there and she didn't explode and she uses her Avengers communicator card. I'm not even kidding. She's like, pulls it out and she's like, oh, fuck, I've been floating here for a long time. I could have called home. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. <laughs> and she she just calls for help. It's like when you lose your glasses on top of your top of your head, guys, right? <laughs> and oh. uh, Hank Pym, who's giant man uh, at this time, Captain America, Thor, and Iron Man, four dudes go into the microverse to rescue her. Mm-hmm. 
So she was on hiatus from being an Avenger for a little bit because she's like, oh, I need to like recover from being in the microverse. It was a lot. I was just floating for got, so long. I got tired of talking to this dude <laughs> called Rom. Yeah. Oh, my God. I wish. <laughs> um, and then she joins the Avengers Unity Squad. Yep. In Uncanny Avengers written by Rick Remender. Yes, which is a, a pretty good little run. It's actually a fun run, yeah. She also is the uh, privately funds this team in order to kind of avoid dealing with government funds and subsidies. That's an important thing and, to and, know. And the Unity Squad 2 is the squad set up by Captain America after Avengers vs. X-Men, where the idea is that it's half mutants, half Avengers. Yes. And so it can like make relations better. Yeah, because they just had this whole big Avengers vs. X-Men thing where they fought mm-hmm. and it was bad and blah, blah, blah. Symbol of hope, great power, great responsibility, comics. During Inhumanity, um, which is a run about the Inhumans. Um, it, it, which is actually a run because Avengers vs. X, and we got to set this up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know a ton about Inhumanity. Well, so Inhumanity please. is directly comes out of a plot point in Avengers vs. X Men. In Avengers vs. X Men, uh, no, Inhumanity, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm getting the events mixed up. Inhumanity comes from an event in Infinity. Now, Infinity right. is this Jonathan Hickman Avengers run. Basically, the Avengers fight a bunch of aliens in space, and the aliens claim they created it. Just, it's complicated. Don't worry about it. I, I'm trying uh, to like skirt the space yep. stuff. And Thanos comes to Earth, and Thanos comes to Adelin, the city of the Inhumans, yes. to Black Bolt, and is like, yo, you got something I want. You got my child, who you've been hiding here on Earth. Tell me where he's at. And Black Bolt basically flips him the bird and... And blows up Adeline and blows up the Terran mist mm-hmm. that spread throughout Earth. And this Terran mist get in contact with humans who get superpowers like Kamala Khan, like the new Miss Marvel, and other people. So Inhumanity is about meeting all the new humans. It's they, about the retcon because we can't have mutants. Exactly. It's about the medcon or the retcon that Marvel Studios doesn't have mutants. So Marvel Studios is like, we need mutants. Ah, uh, Inhumans. Yeah. So during that whole time, Janet returns to the microverse in order to save a family that's been stuck there. That's really all she does. But the important thing is that she she's never willingly gone into the microverse before so that she's doing this. You know, she's learning and she's becoming braver. It's, you know, kind of a big act. And, and there's a cameo from Rom. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Oh, good. Um, and that's where we're going to stop. That's the last time we saw her? Well, she's in Secret Wars, but she's in a bunch of books in Secret Wars, and it's all very minor, and it's a lot of nonsense. Mm-hmm. So that's the last big thing that she did. Great. And we're going to talk real briefly about Ultimate Wasp. Okay. Because we've talked a lot about Ultimate Wasp. And to be honest, we'll probably have a giant... I think we, 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 we've been... A retrospective. We've been talking about having an Ultimate Universe retrospective to kind of go about all the things. Mm-hmm. And you know what? There's still like... I still think there's there's a lesson to be had out of the Ultimates. And I still think there's a lesson to be had out of Ultimate Nick Fury. And Ultimate FF? Uh, maybe not. But there definitely is enough to do an Ultimate Spider-Man. That's not Miles Morales. The, the Ultimate oh, Peter, Peter Parker. Parker? Yes. Oh, that's cool. I would do that. There's more than enough. Um, So the... The Ultimate Universe, for those who don't know, is basically a reimagining of the classic Marvel characters. It was. It was the the basic idea is that it was created in the year two thousand, mm-hmm. and it was Joe Quesada was like, "What if these Marvel characters were created in the year 2000? So it's a it's a it's a it's re- an updated. It's a reimagining, and a lot of the Marvel Studios movies take from the Ultimate Universe. Yeah, if, if only aesthetically sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this universe, Janet Van Dyne, same name, is mm-hmm. twenty six years old. She's of Asian descent. She has two PhDs, one in molecular biology, one in something else that's never mentioned. Um, she is known to be a mutant, but she's hiding her identity. Uh-huh. She possesses insectoid genetics. Yeah. And that's the reason why she's... And she'll do weird things like... They hint at a lot of like gross stuff. Egg. Yeah, like it's eggs. really, yeah. it's really like really gross. It's not explicit. It's 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 gross, but the the thing that I appreciate about it is that if I think if you were an insectoid mutant, you yeah. would probably do that. I know, but it's like... I know it's gross. It, like the rest of her character is so interesting that when I stop and think about that, I'm just like, oh fuck. Mm. And her wings stop. are real. Yes, they are, and they're not just when she shrinks. Mm-hmm. She also suffers from bulimia. Oh really? Yeah, she, it's, it's, it's a later edition. It's not. It's not in the first two volumes. Or are, are, are you going to tell about the ultimate fate of Ultimate Janet Van Dyne? Um, I'm going to say what Hank Pym does to her. Oh good god, yeah. Um, so remember before when we talked about how uh, how Hank Pym hit her? And we weren't a big fan of that. Mm-hmm. Well, in the Ultimates run, because, you know, like you said, it, it was created for the year 2000. So there is more violence than obviously in the earlier Silver Age stuff, like the Hulk eats people. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hank and Janet have a fight. And Janet, you know, they're they're physically fighting with each other. And Janet's a it's match It's a pretty for intense fight. She And she shrinks down to wasp size and she's shooting him with her little bio stings. And he takes a can of bug spray and chases her into the walls of his house. 
and and almost kills her. And she's stuck there. And I think that's another reason why, you know, people don't have, like, the best feelings about Hank Pym. But the thing that I really like about Ultimate Wasp is that not only is she not a white person, like, that's cool, and she's Asian, and why not? But she is an intellectual match for Hank Pym. Mm -hmm. Because Class of Wasp, Class of Janet, for all that I love her, you know, it's kind of like Sue Storm. Like, they're smart characters, but they're not, they're never the equal of their men. Mm -hmm. And in this universe, she is. She's super smart. She can stand with Hank. She can stand with Tony Stark. That's what I really like about it. Well, let me real quick tell the the listeners out there and you, if you don't know, that Janet Van Dyne, ultimate Janet Van Dyne, sadly ends up in one of the worst moments in one of the worst yeah. comic books ever written. So the Ultimate Universe got to this point where they kept trying to reboot it so many times, and they did this storyline called Ultimatum, mm. written by Jeff Loeb. And you're like, wait a minute, Jeff Loeb wrote Batman The Long Halloween. Yeah, that was 20 years ago. Uh, because now Jeff Loeb can't write at all. Yeah. So he wrote this event called Ultimatum, where basically a tidal wave took out New York. Now, during the flood in New York City, in the beginning of the Ultimatum event, Wasp was separated from her team and was found by Hank Pym and Hawkeye that she was dead and being eaten by the blob. Yeah. So the blob just ate her for no reason. They never Because they explained. didn't want to write her anymore. Yep. And Hank Pym avenged her death by biting off the blob's head. Yeah. One of the worst moments, one of the worst comic books. To one of the best characters in that universe. Yes. Janet, ultimate Janet. Um, and, and if they introduce Janet Van Dyne into the Marvel Cinematic mm -hmm. Universe, I actually really hope they make her Asian. I do, too. Um, be, and it's funny because it's such a minor detail, but it makes the character so much more interesting. Yeah, and it, and it actually puts a non-white person on the Avengers. I know, like, how nice to have some representation. Yeah, right? So th that's the end. That is the History 101 of Janet Van Dyne. Um, I had a super fun time learning all this, and I have a bunch of runs I want to go read now. Super fun time! So I hope that you learned something, Jason. I hope the listeners enjoy this. I learned some things. Because About all the murder and the avenging. I know, so many murders. <laughs> so why don't we move into recommended reading really yes, quick. Yes, the recommended reading. This where is we where, recommend reading. This is where you recommend stuff you should read if you want to, you care about the wasp. I just always assume that you have a little pitch for it, and I'm like, oh, but it's right there in the name. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's my fault. <laughs> um, so I am going to, uh, I'm going to recommend the initi initiative Mighty Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis and Dan Slott. Okay. With art by Frank Cho, Mark Bagley, and Kai Pham. Just the whole run. Just all of it. Got it. It's really, I think she's solid in all of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to recommend Ultimates Volume 1 and 2, Just Stop After That, mm -hmm. by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch. They're complete. They have an entity. Totally. Entity. Yep. Uh, do you have any recommended reading? I or? have recommended watching. What? Now- This is not a new media class, my friend. Um, well, there have been, um, there was a decent, very excellent Avengers cartoon on a couple years ago. And I've talked about it several times. Not Avengers Assemble, which is on now. That- Cartoon is garbage. A couple years ago, there was a cartoon called Avengers Earth's Mightiest Hero, and it kind of mishmashed all these really cool storylines from mm -hmm. the comics. So Secret Invasion's in there, Civil War is in there, Galactus is in there. It's available on Netflix. And Wasp, it's all available on Netflix, and Wasp is the founding member of the team. And she's in there, and Hank and her aren't dating, mm -hmm. and actually a lot of the strife is between her and Hank because she has a hardcore crush on Hank in that series, and she's very... Kind of energetic, and and she's probably the character that has the biggest character arc. Oh yeah, one her costume in there is is it's great. It's awesome. It's really cool. She has a great personality. You might get annoyed by it, but as the series progresses, like so, she starts out very innocent and naive, but as the series progresses, she becomes like a true hero. I would say that her arc is a lot like Starfire's in the original Teen Titans cartoon. Like sure. at the beginning, you're like you're so like naive and you're so yes. sweet, and then by the end of it, they can she can stand on her own two feet. Yes, and and Janet can be very annoying in some of the early episodes because mm -hmm. she's kind of in it for fun and she does a lot of things where like. Like, let's go shopping, Hank. And they're just like, but it's a kid's cartoon. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it's actually quite good. And I, it actually is my favorite representation of Wasp, is Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Aw, that's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Shall we move into discussion? She's cute as a button in it, too. She's usually, Janet's usually very cute. Mm -hmm. Let's move into the discussion area of the podcast where we discuss things. Yes. So I'm going to ask you something that you asked me at the beginning of the show. Uh, do you think that she is one of the most important Avengers characters? Do you think she's higher than top five? Um, I have to say yes, but with a caveat. Sure. You can have caveats. It's your opinion. I say yes, but 
I kind of feel that it's a yes because she's the token woman. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel it's yes because she was there at the beginning. The sad thing about it, and you you illustrated in this podcast, is that there's a lot of times where Janet just does nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the problem we, we found with Scarlet Witch and stuff like that. Like, Janet really doesn't come into her own until she leads the team. Mm -hmm. And for, like, 20 years, it's just like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Here's the thing. I actually think the greatest Wasp story is still ahead of us. I don't think we've come across it. I hope... Maybe one day I can write it. I hope maybe one day you can write it. I hope maybe one day one of the listeners of this podcast can write it. And I will read the shit out of it. And I look forward to that day. Have we, Have I read the greatest Wasp story of t line of all time? I actually think no. And, and I kind of think that's sad. But would you rather have seen her in the movie universe than Black Widow? Yes. Because I would too. Hardcore yes. Because Black Widow to me is, man... I get the reason why they put the Black Widow, because the Black Widow is easier to believe in reality, whereas mm -hmm. the Wasp is harder. I kind of think it sucks that we haven't seen the Wasp in the Avengers, because she is a founding Avenger. And it's a little nitpick of the Marvel Universe that we haven't, that two of the founding members of the Avengers got X'd off. Yeah. And we've, and one of them has, is now old man Michael Douglas. And number two is stuck in a quantum realm somewhere. That, yeah, that a dude got back from. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, I think she should have been on the team instead of Black Widow. Yes, hardcore, yes. You think she should be Asian in the MCU? Oh, uh, totally. Totally. I wish she was Asian in the normal Marvel comic book universe. I wish that... Cause Secret, just totally wrecked yeah, on it? Yeah, Secret Wars, just change it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> there are too many whiteies in the Marvel universe. Come there, on now. There's There's a yeah. lot. And a little, every little helps. Mm. So, if we got to see her in the MCU, would you want to see her lead an Avengers team? Uh, yes. I mean, it'll be in phase 57, but... I think she should lead an Avengers team. I think Hawkeye should be her second uh, in command. And I think they should operate on a base that's on Manhattan Beach so we can call it West Coast Avengers. <laughs> bow, bow, bow. And then they can shoot it out here because they shoot them all out here anyway. <laughs> and it's just her and Hawkeye and an El Camino looking for criminals. Uh, that's awesome. And Kate Bishop's, and Bishop Kate Bishop's just on the back. <laughs> I would watch the fuck out of that. It's like, it's like, it's like really skeevy, weird Rockford superhero files. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. That'd be an amazing Netflix series as well. Uh, well, I was going to ask, my final question was going to be like, who do you think would write a really great Wasp miniseries? But do you have a choice? You said everyone. Uh, I lean towards Greg Pak. Okay. Because he writes good ladies, standalone ladies. He does write good ladies. His Lana Lang in Action Comics is amazing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, and then have Nicholas Scott draw her because Nicholas Scott draws really pretty people. <laughs> you know who I would love to get a chance at the Wasp? And I kind of think he probably never will. Because I think he's so far in the independent world now that he'll never do it. Mm -hmm. I think somebody who would give an amazing uh, story for the Wasp and maybe possibly do a story kind of retconning some stuff from the past yeah. would be Brian K. Vaughn. Oh, really? I thought you were going to say Music. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> uh, music had a shot at the Wasp and he... He wrote her very classical, and but but still, he he did a great job with her. He did, he totally uh, um, did. But he's still he's very classic. Brian, the reason why I say Brian K. Vaughn is because Brian K. Vaughn wrote what I consider to be the best Doctor Strange story of all time, which is Doctor Strange: The Oath. Mm -hmm. And it was this really great mini series drawn by Marcus Martin. You should go find this trade; it's amazing. Still in print. I know this is a recommended reading for Doctor Strange, but but anyways, he took Doctor Strange. Put him in a modern storyline, but still like kept all the 60s elements. All the so cool stuff. Yeah, so the cool stuff. So I think he could do it for Janet as well and maybe retcon some of her stupidness out of her history. Interesting. And also, he's shown in Saga and in many Why yeah. the Last Man that he can write strong women characters. Also strong women with wings. Because oh, Alana's got wings. There you go. Yeah. So <laughs> you know what? I'd say I'd say Brian K. Vaughn. I would love to see it, but I think he's so far down the road of independent comics that he'll never come. He's back making to so much money with Saga. So yep, totally. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the end of my discussion. Unless you have anything that you want to add. Um, I'm surprised that you want to read Wasp stuff now. I do. I just. What do you most? What do you want to check out the most? Um, 
Probably some of that or Mighty Avengers stuff because mm-hmm. I have never read it. Uh, manage your expectations. That's all I'll say because I have I've read it. That there was that was during the time where I literally was reading everything Avengers, mm-hmm. and that was actually the run that knocked me out. Of oh, it. really? Yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just feel like I feel like I'm looking yeah for that great run and maybe it doesn't exist. I, I to be honest with you, I like Janet Van Dyne. I I miss that she's not in the movies. I. I cannot name you the Wasp run that she's great. To be honest with you, I honestly think she's the best in Avengers Forever. But that is not a... Well, I haven't read Avengers Forever, but so maybe I'll read that. That's a run that I would only recommend reading if you have lightning fast Wikipedia internet speed <laughs> right next to you. Okay. It's tough. It's a tough read. Well, if I know that going in, maybe it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, like I, I want something more than what I've already had. Yeah, and that's, and that's our... Our um, our gauntlet. That's our challenge to anybody out there that wants to work in comic books. Figure out what is the great Janet Van Dyne story because I want to read it. Because it's there. Because it's out there. It can happen. Who's gonna write it? Cool. It's there for the taking, and I challenge all of you to do it. Even us in the room, you and me doing this right now. Challenge accepted. Yep. Cool. Let's move on to the final part of this podcast. Oh, the teaching tweet where we take 140 characters to tell you what we think about this character and sometimes we'll put it on Twitter and sometimes we won't. Yeah, mostly we won't. (laughs) So here's my teaching tweet. For Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp. Janet Van Dyne, taking blows from every side, shrinking down to the size of a fly, look out, she's an underrated Avenger. Look out, she's an underrated Avenger. I tried to put it in that song. Yeah. Uh, everybody, we just got five comments where people are like, oh, God, he's saying again. <laughs> well, too bad because we have five more like comments Thank that you. like you singing. Thank you so much for your Janet Van Dyne 1960s retro style, insectoid style Janet Van Dyne lesson. Thank you all for listening. That's it for the Janet Van Dyne lesson of Geek History Lesson. If you want to listen to more goodness, because we dropped a lot of Geek History Lesson, yeah. like, go listen to that. Go listen to that. You can find all those episodes <laughs> on iTunes. You can find all those episodes on Stitcher. And while you're there, please leave us a rating and a review. Now, I know a lot of you are like, hey, he says please leave us a rating and a review in every podcast. But seriously, it, it helps. helps so much. And I read all of them. I do. And sometimes they help my self-esteem, and sometimes I come home a sad panda. So they make a difference. And, you know, positive or negative, either way, it helps. But it does help our rankings in the searches for iTunes and Stitcher. So other people that are like, oh, I want something geek, they can find us. And we need to get the all, we need to fill up the classroom. The classroom needs to be full of geeks. Yeah, we need to move to a bigger classroom. Yep. And if you want to suggest lessons uh, for the future of Geek History Lesson or tell us what you think would be the perfect Janet Van Dyne story, Ashley, where can they do that? They can do that on Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson and GeekHistoryLesson.com, which is a Tumblr, so our asks are always open. You know, in the Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson, I've noticed a lot more people like posting on our wall Mm -hmm. and just giving us comments, and that's super cool. It's awesome. I read them all, too. I read all the comments. I do. So it's very... so. Totally, totally, uh, please go there and respond. And if you want to complain to Ashley that you think she didn't shrink down and do a good enough job, well, that's too mean. Don't do that. But if you want to tell her that you did a, she did a good job, you should go do that on her Twitter, which is... At Ashley V. Robinson. Yes. That's all I have to say about it. Yes. <laughs> go do and if that. you want to go tell Jason that you think his singing is the best thing in the world, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N, on YouTube.com slash Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Redshirt Diaries is coming. You should go check it out. And also you can find me on Periscope. Uh, J- find me on Periscope, too. J-A-W-I-I-N. Well, you didn't bring it up. I didn't know I planned to do Periscope. You can plug whatever you want. You want to plug your Periscope? No. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. That's it for Geek History Lesson about Janet Van Dyne. Thank you all for listening. I'm Jason. I'm going to change my costume as soon as this podcast is over. Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And Professor Ashley, this was your insectoid lesson. So mm. please, insectoid-like, close it out. Class is dismissed.
So what's your favorite Janet Van Dyne costume? The the I like the black and gold, but I also have a soft spot for her very first costume, like the silly uh, red dress with the pointy silver hat. With a weird pointy silver hat. Yeah. yeah right? And like I get it's supposed to look like a stinger. And I know it's like totally. It's kind of looks like a bullet. And it's totally stupid, but I really like it. Do you think Janet could climb onto a bullet and a gun and be fired at somebody? Uh, it would depend because, cause, you know, I mean, you know, um, but I don't know if Because <laughs> I use know. guns all the time. No, but because <laughs> we've, we've discussed mm-hmm. the way that you fire a bullet before. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a controlled explosion. So I don't know if the heat and the fire oh. would be an issue. Whereas like you know, the she Hawkeye was, arrow thing. But she was in the front of it. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. But she have to drop down on the bullet at she just the right a, time. She need a force field then. Yeah, oh. or or a special suit made of special science. Got it. Special science. All right, so let's let's get back to this uh, West Coast Avengers with the Rockford Files. Um, <laughs> so we got we got Janet, we got Hawkeye, and we got Kate Bishop in the back of an El Camino. What's episode one called? What do you call? What do you title the pilot of West Coast Avengers? Pilot. No, 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 no. That's what you call we're, shows. We're going to be fancier than that. <laughs> What's the pilot called? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. How about, how about... Tiny Justice. Tiny, ooh, Tiny Justice. And then Kate bad. can shoot her off the back of an arrow. I like Tiny Justice, yeah. Episode two will be Confrontation at the Creek. There's no creeks in LA. Oh, you just... There's no water it's here. A, it's a ditch aquifer. What? The creek. I don't know what that means. You know what it means? It means it's time for West Coast <laughs> Evangel. Bow, bow, bow. Are you tired of that yet? No. I love every minute of it. I know. 